Hello and welcome back to New Meta, episode 21, back to the usual Friday apps. The first app with the battle pass, I'm just throwing that out there straight away. Um, big episode 20 that we had uh, talking about climbing the ranks and how climbing MMR changes as you get higher and higher MMR. Got a really good response for that episode, so I hope you listeners enjoyed it. Um, we enjoyed doing it. A bit more of a casual, fun episode today. We wouldn't be a real Dota podcast if we didn't talk about the Battle Pass, so that's one thing that we're definitely going to be take a bit of time to do. And then also we're going to be talking about fun lanes to try, fun hero combinations, particularly in lanes, but maybe a bit in-game as well, to try. Joining me as always, Marco and Adam. Uh, Marco, I feel like the only intro that suits today is what battle pass level are you because that's all that matters basically oh okay um i think i'm only level two still (laughs) yeah i think level two scrub yeah um adam also welcome you're not level two no i think it's like 515 or something feels good to be an earning man yeah i'll be an earning man soon just in time for the steam sale i think like last year um but we'll see I wouldn't say I'm an earning man, I just have no impulse control. <laughs> <laughs> That's a deadly combo right there, an earning yeah. man. Well, to be fair, a deadlier combo is an unearning man <laughs> yeah. that doesn't have impulse With- control. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm level four. I, I'm i probably... Last year I waited for the um, Steam sales and then bought up to... I think... I actually can't remember what I bought up to last year, but there are some really sick battle pass things this year that are all around sort of like the 300 level so i'll we'll see where i end up but yeah i think um, 500 gets you pretty much everything exclusive yeah that's right it's a lot more condensed this year than yeah it's good um let's just jump straight into this battle pass in fact yeah you say it's a lot more condensed it's whereas last year what they had some random exclusive stuff that was still hopping around at sort of like 700 level sort of thing i can't yeah, remember 650 i know that's when they gave out those uh green immortals do you remember those like oh the, yeah the storm that was so, and the kanka that was strange yeah they yeah. might have they might have some of that for us this year like a purple purple immortals reimaginings Maybe. yeah they're yeah. pretty cool how long's your seb adam uh i don't know i i refuse to put it on my chat wheel <laughs> oh does it go get longer with high level yeah. yeah. Oh, that is sick. <laughs> I have a somebody that has a thousand battle pass levels, and they their seb is pretty long. I don't know if it's like <laughs> as long as it can be, or or if it even just keeps getting longer. You know, what if they just splice it out or stretch it out to be continuously longer, even longer than what it, uh, yeah yeah OD said originally? That'd be crazy. Yeah. Um. I mean, I don't know if we want to open the page and just scroll down. It seems like somewhat of a reasonable thing to do. First thing to talk about, just briefly maybe, is the prize pool. Already at like eight and a half million or something. Um, I feel like every year people talk about how it can't increase every year. But, I mean, it looks set to do so. Did TI8 surpass TI7? In terms of prize pool. Um, yes, they all did. Everything's passed everything. Because I know that was a big topic no, it did, of conversation. For sure, but it, but it, it did. Okay. It only did. Well, it's interesting because it blew it, it blew TI seven out of the water in the initial two weeks of release. Then it plateaued for ages and TI seven took over. And then it only TIA only took over again with something like eight or nine days to go before the cutoff point. Okay. Um Yeah, they were pretty close. They were both in the twenty four million. Yeah. So I think some people are thinking that maybe this one might follow a similar route in that even though it's way ahead at the moment, it might plateau for a long while. I'm not so sure. It's 1.8 million ahead of second place after one day and like 15 hours. Yeah, yeah. It started off way, way more strong. Kind of surprising. Did it come out later than when it came out last year, though? No, almost exactly almost. the same time. Okay. I think purely because it's in Shanghai, Chinese Dota fans won't let it be the first one yeah. to go. There'll be like a national emergency yeah, the with like two weeks to go. Pumps in five million if it gets too close. Yeah, they'll be like, do it for China. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
so not much to say about Wrath of Mokora or whatever. Can't even be bothered to ex- explain it. But one thing I'm going to jump to, jungle. I'm already flying through the jungle. Don't know about you. Adam, have you gone anywhere yet? I've done like a couple. Okay. Uh, just like, I think I did a support hero without feet. <laughs> that, was a, that was a quest I was supposed to do. So Naga Siren got me that one. That's funny. I um I had to do a pot-bellied hero, and the only available one was Alchemist. Yeah, not pot-bellied carry. Yeah, carry not even oh, pudge, right? oh, carry, I see. So basically it said, do Alchemist. Yeah, yeah. which is funny, because at another point in the jungle, I had the actual Alchemist hero icon, so... So you got two at once? Two at once, yeah. Although wow. they were leading kind of the same way. I'm making my way towards the Ursa set, slowly. Not deliberately, because I actually prefer the Dazzle one, but... It just happened that way. I think I've done five or six. So, what do you think the high value carry support treasures will be? Is it going to be a set or just or like a sick item or something? I'm intrigued like personally. I'm not so sure because it looks harder to get to. Yeah, like it doesn't slightly to get harder to, yeah. to get to, or at least similar to get to. I'll be really interested to see what that is. I'll be really disappointed if it turns out to be the alternative style for the set. That would be disappointing. That would be a bit of a debate. Yeah, those are fragments that you have to pick up. You have to pick up three fragments to get the alternative. Ooh. Ooh. The alternative Ursa style is pretty badass. I didn't know that, yeah. A lot of the alternates are really cool. The alternate Dazzle looks cool as well. The Sven's a bit weird. <laughs> the Dazzle yeah. one's, yeah. The Dazzle one's sweet. Yeah, I like that. So yeah, that's, that's jungle. Um, the nice thing for me about jungle is it's like, today, basically this morning, I've just played three unranked games playing heroes that I would never normally pick. And it's actually a lot of fun. <laughs> it's really good fun playing heroes that are not usual. And jungle is basically what it takes for me to do that. I suppose I wouldn't bother normally. So it's quite nice. No, I really like that. And it takes the uh, option. I usually have, you guys know, is a uh, pick paralysis. I never know what to what to pick. So it just takes <laughs> <Yeah>. everything, <laughs> takes that decision out of my hands. I'm like, oh, well, this is a... You cut down the hero pool to like twelve. I can make a decision. Yeah, yeah. The dream is having a daily hero challenge that's the same as a jungle. I'm waiting for that because then you've got a hero pool of one basically. And you have to pick that hero. I feel like. Yeah, I never do the daily hero. Yeah, I thought about it, but then it's like I want to go through the jungle. It's just a hundred points. I don't really care. Final word on the jungle as well. The fact that it takes two attempts to do it in turbo is a huge change from last year because I debated myself into playing loads of turbo last year to try and blast through the jungle near the end of the battle pass and it was one of the worst things ever because I just hate turbo mode. Yeah, I remember you playing five games in a row and just never winning. <laughs> Couldn't win <a> <laughs> and then turbo, it ends yeah. up being like three full matches you could have played. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I played like 10 games of OD in oh, turbo I remember. to yeah, try I and remember. finish it oh my god and i was so tilted it was the worst but they added the um the culling blade to where the first turbo yeah. game if you win it it weakens the hero and then you can use the chop the coin blade to get through so so you we're still going to play a few games of turbo basically yeah unfortunately um marco do you want to take do you want to talk about living towers about the oh the living towers hmm. yeah so they look really cool. They're very reminiscent of Dota 1. That's 100% the idea that they've come from. Because back in Dota 1, you had the Sentinel versus the Scourge. This, the Warcraft 3 towers were just like some living towers that threw stuff. Basically the same. So that is really, really cool. A question I added, I don't know how you get them. I don't know what level it is. At first, I thought... It was just going to come with the battle pass, so I was really hyped because it was like, oh, buy battle pass and get these towers, but I guess that's not the case. Do you know, Adam, what it's level like it is? Three something, I thought. Maybe yes, before. I'm, I'm, pulling up, I'm pulling up the battle pass now. If, if you could share that in game or something, that'd be really nice. Three, three, five. I ain't getting three, three, five. Does so, that, it doesn't share in game. It's only client side for. I don't know. Oh, really? That's a is shame. It? I was hoping it was share. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I, I don't, it'd be nice. I mean, if you could I, I have it. I have it, and I play it, and it's there. I don't know how it looks for other people, though. I hope it's there. I mean, I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen a, a living tower yet. Um, wait, is that true? Maybe I did actually. I can't remember. <laughs> if, if I've seen one, then it's definitely a shared thing. 
but I can't remember whether I've seen one. So they look pretty cool. Um, definitely gonna have to get used to it because I'm. It's a lot of new visual clutter for sure. Yeah, Not used to the tower like hucking these stones at at you. Yeah, every battle pass just takes clutter to a whole new level. Probably right. radiant tower looks like tiny in the. Dire Tower looks like Shadow Fiend. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, for sure, yeah. Um, digging stuff, monkey stuff, drum stuff, fat balloon lizard stuff. Not balloon, flying balloon. It's yeah. pretty funny. I've dug up two sets of 100 battle points. So. I dug up a 500 point and a 5,000 point. What? So you dug up a 5,000 point? A 5,000 point, point. yeah. Jeez. <laughs> we were all just like, what? What the, what the heck? What's so, that insane? Yeah, so make sure you dig. Yeah. Uh, either when you're like in random spots, do, do not dig in the middle of a team fight because you can get a stasis trap. <laughs> yeah, and so, have to channel it as well. You can yeah. dig a stasis trap. Yeah. Yeah. In ranked. Yes. You can pay to yeah. lose. Literally. Wow. Stun, I don't know if it stuns your team, but it definitely stuns you. So. Jesus, imagine if that happened in like the major or something. <laughs> TI Grand Finals. Yeah. Um yeah, you can dig up treasures and like spins on Ryala's is Ryala the how do you pronounce CM? Riley? Right. Riley? Riley? Rely? That's what I'm <laughs> Rely. No. I say Ryala, I don't know if that's that's probably Isn't cool. it R Y L A I? Rely? Rely Rely is real. Rely. I I'm just gonna assume that whatever I say is wrong, so <laughs> Yeah, Marco's afraid to 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 pronounce things after like the the Ool's debacle and Rosh debacle. Get slain too hard in the Discord. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean the the drum and lizard stuff, whatever. I don't care. The drum's pretty fun because the drum can get, be fun. It's got like five thousand HP, and everybody smacks it. Yeah, and it lowers it's... HP and makes noises, and then the monkey throws literal poo at people. <laughs> so. I haven't actually done that in lane yet. Yeah, it's definitely like I feel like it's it's tilt slash distraction basically. Yeah, or it drum is like brown. celebration. I'm looking at the video now. It stains them brown. That's too much. <laughs> yeah, silly monkey. Coaching challenge. Adam, fancy yourself as a coach? I uh, I'd be willing to try it. I don't know. I don't know what what it's going to be like. One of my friends did it and snake king was his coach really oh, sick. yeah yeah that is so, cool. i don't know how it went but i don't know what you, if you're are you supposed to like queue with the five sec or put I don't, you with a, a random yeah it sounds like this solo expedition where you then just get put with randoms but it sounds yeah, it, it says random dota squads if you yeah. could party with a coach that's higher than the party mmr so does that mean that when you just queue for a solo ranked game, you have a chance of getting a coach that's queuing for coach's challenge? I think so, because it did say that you have the option to turn the coach off. Yeah. So I don't see why that wouldn't be the case. It's an interesting change. It's, it's one of those where if used properly, which isn't something to be assumed, but if used properly, it should be good. Like I'm imagining lower mmr games it could be pretty useful right i mean i know you only have to be 500 mmr higher so it's not if much. people are responsive potentially yeah but if, if you're thinking of like a 1.5k game with like a 2k coach person that doesn't have to think about what he's doing because he's coaching he's just watching he's gonna be able to give decent advice or um which could make the experience better for the players i don't know yeah definitely gonna have to try at least one game yeah just to to try the feature if they did if you could do it with a party game that would be genuinely cool but maybe you can't hmm let's see about What's that one interesting stuff. is when you go to the coaching tab it are it has your match history of when you've coached games before in the coach slot <laughs> so i've only ever coached four games and usually when i coach it's just that I, this was before that you could spectate live so this right. was the only reason i would have coaching games so it's like goes back to 2013 it's pretty interesting yeah. but they're not like wins or losses because they're just not scored yeah but definitely a try it once and see how it goes yeah some decent a little bit of points up for grabs as well yeah i'll probably do a coaching match whilst watching the major on the achievements or something imagine if you just loaded into a game and you had a coach and they just yelled at you the entire time <laughs> i guess you can mute the coach but 
you could like I guess hold people's games hostage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, party finder don't care. Avoid player. Do we care about that? That's a pretty big one, given it's something that has been asked for and suggested for ages. I feel. Yeah, it has been. A lot of people were happy about the avoid player. I'm yet to use it, but I feel like I could probably put a couple of people on the like over the next month or something. Yeah, I think so. People that are just obnoxious to play with in solo ranked. Yeah, if anyone ever destroys items, I now have the avoid player button. It's pretty yeah, rare it's nice. for that type of stuff to happen, so be mm. interesting. And then I would say about the party finder, at least add people to your party finder because it is an achievement for the battle pass. So oh. farm those points. True, yeah. Just worth slapping people on there like post-game, whether you know them or not. Um, MVP vote. I thought this was quite... This is the potential to be cool if it works. I don't think it's worked for me yet. I click on a hero to vote for MVP and then it never shows who the actual MVP is. I don't know how it's decided. I've seen it on someone else's game where there is this little crown icon over the person who gets MVP because we've seen it on our yeah. feed because it comes up if you get it. So we've seen other people it work for, but yeah, in a few games we've played, we'd vote for someone, but then no outcome is ever determined. Have you seen it work, Adam? I've seen it on the feed. I've never seen it work in game, but I have seen where it said like you were voted as MVP, you know, in yeah, the voting stage, come. but then it never does anything, hmm. which, is, which is sad. Yeah, like none of my games in my, if I go to my recent matches, it doesn't say. I think it's cool. Who the MVP is. Addition. But yeah, it kind of needs to work first. Yeah, it might be a bit of a, probably a little firefight change maybe from Valve at some point. I think it worked at first and then after all these updates, it might have broken it a little bit yeah right. because it's a similar thing to mvp vote i'll just jump ahead or insert the versus screen at the start now that's something that i can get behind the little versus animation thing i'm loving that oh uh, the versus screen is sick and there's two versions too oh yeah i haven't seen yeah. the other version is there um, like a cooler version i don't know, i think there, there's just like alternate viewpoints I oh, guess I see, there's one of the heroes running, maybe, and then the heroes. Yeah, the... yeah, yeah. Oh, that you're you're right. Actually, yeah, it's definitely cool. Just nice little pre-game highlight of some cool set or something. It's always sad when it highlights someone without a set. That's rough. Yeah. Or without Dota Plus, so there's like no stat tracks, whatever. It's just a big <laughs> like blank bar, and it's just yeah. this random person as a level zero oracle. It's definitely 3D chess from Gaben. It's like, it look, it deliberately looks terrible if you don't have Dota Plus and if you don't have cosmetics. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just a highlight of, look at how cool these people, you, look at how cool you'll look if you actually spend money on the game. And who has the worst base set in Dota now? I guess Morphling. I'm just yeah, trying to think, it's like, lovely. imagine you load in and it's just like base set Shadow Fiend looking like an idiot but now shadow fiend's got a decent like he got a rework viper got a rework slaughter got a rework pudge got one so i think my, it might be my morph with items is definitely worse than my morph without items <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, a fight. yeah he's got he's got some pretty trash like common items from back in the yeah. day um uh, no, just ahead. to go back up there's the there's the high five. Oh yeah we'll, we'll go back is, up don't worry about that okay i mean that's a pretty yeah big pog and that there's also uh achievements for high fiving so make sure you high five really i've been spamming high five i'm hoping to get yeah. that achievement soon then somehow two of my party mates were like i think maybe if you just high five and like stand next to one another they're just high fiving over and over like it was faster than the cooldown it doesn't so... go on cooldown if it's a, if it's a successful high five. Oh really it's like culling yeah, blade it's... well damn yeah so yeah all that's ever happened to me is I just get left hanging, man. It feels bad. <laughs> oh, can you change the hotkeys for these consumables and high fives? Do you know? Because for me, to high five someone, it's control two. But then typically control two is for me to share the item I have in my two. So like EG I might have a tango where my hotkeys two. So control two would be to share a tango. Not... But now it's to high five, so I'm kind of fucked. That's I'm weird. sure you can. I just left 
mine aren't on any. I just left click to use. Oh, really? If you yeah. press control, you'll. I think it will come up what its um, hotkey is. You should try that out and see what it does. I know, but like the first four are control Q through R, like the yeah. the shovel and stuff. But my avatar, like the the sign plant, and then the uh, the high five, they aren't any on anything. I think for me, that's interesting. Debates me. There must be a way to change it because we've a mine's control four, and I haven't changed anything for your high five. Yeah, so we've all got different hotkeys for it. Hmm. I have no idea how that works. Also, oh uh, man, I um, in one of the in-house games yesterday. Quick shout out to the in-house that we played. Um, back at it after missing last week. It was good fun. Couple of games in, I miss skilled because I wanted to um, make a drum on the rune, and drum <laughs> is con- is control E. So I leveled by E spell because I did click control E, which and control for me is like level up if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so I miss skilled on Tusk and took shards instead of E rather than tag team. So yeah, I was trying to do control Q, whichever one that is. I can't remember which one that is. Um, and misspelled. And then we didn't have tag team for the runes and it was really bad. So that was yeah, a bit... That's, a, that's yeah. the same thing happened to one of my party mates. One of the shovel and... Oh, that was it. Skilled, no, skilled uh, Berserker's Call as Axe instead of battle hunger or spin and we were just like well i guess this lane's over game is hard i would like to find out how you can change him uh we'll see see about that the banner one this is a theme that i'll probably bring up later but the higher you are mmr wise the more of this annoying stuff there is because people that are high immortal tend to just dota is life so they just have one thousand like level battle passes and stuff um certainly watching top streamers like gork and stuff briefly there's just banners and voice lines all the time versus my games where most people are like level 10 left to level 100 sort of thing so I have, i'm yet to see a banner but i look forward to seeing one an avatar banner at least yeah i haven't planted one but i bet in the mid lane it'd be pretty funny you just walk <laughs> up on their high ground and plant a banner <laughs> yeah for sure Assistant features, uh, Marco, I know you're not a fan. Well, are you a fan of this stack and ward assistant thing? Mm, no, not really. It's similar to that topic, that conversation we've had before about ooh, making the game easy to play and so like when they had the stun durations and disable durations bar above heroes, so it became easy to chain stun and people being like, oh making the game too easy and all that. And then you got warding where you could see the neutral spawn box so that you wouldn't block camps or that you could block camps. Ooh, making the game easier. Those ones didn't mind as much. I've mined this one a bit more because it seems too much help. Wait, the... It's not like telling people when to pull the camp seems too much of an assistance. Yeah, what what I'd say is, um, to be fair, having played a few games this morning... It's not actually like I used it once and I stacked plenty of camps. It's not, it's quite small, but nonetheless, is obviously assistant assisting. Changing stuns, I've never played a game where you didn't have stun bars. That must have been a huge change. I imagine that hill is big. That changes the game so much when they've got a, a bar that tells you how long they've got being silenced yeah, or stunned. Yeah, yeah. Stun, stun stacking becomes trivial. Yeah. Or I guess stun locking. You don't want to, you don't want to stack. Without without turning it into a history lesson, but was that a controversial change at the time? I think it yeah. was semi controversial. Yeah, a lot of people I think throw the argument of "oh, you're making the game too easy," but in hindsight, it is kind of fine. Yeah, I I don't mind it. Was it seven point though when they added I, that? I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. So I started playing just after seven point I think my first patch was seven point oh two. Um. Yeah, yeah. Stun, stun bars, and then I honestly like the stacking change because really, with the way it is now, with back when like camps used to have standard stack times across the whole map. Yeah, I could see not having this in here, but now they all have like one to two seconds off, and I'd rather just as a core, my support, be able to get the pull or the the stack off 
right every time. It makes me think we're just going down this path of eventually Valve adds, all right, time your last hit, and then three, two, <laughs> one, last hit. <laughs> like some Black uh, Mirror Dota equivalent. Yeah, maybe. Maybe a bit overboard. I like the uh, the spawn boxes. I mean, that was a wonderful change. when they That added was a that great in. change. I Just to jump back one step, I missed a sly dig I could have made on Stan <laughs> after I made that comment, but maybe it's too late. A sly dig on me about uh, what, uh, not being able to see it. I started that? speaking then. I thought to myself, oh, I should have said that that change to like assisting people with last hit and creep, it doesn't matter. <laughs> after our like 15 minute he, he, he. last hitting debate last episode yeah <laughs> well you mean 15 minute cut down to five minutes <laughs> yeah oh, that's funny Culled down uh for the good of the listener um yeah one of my uh f- long time friends who i played dota with very sparingly right we all start at the same time and then he went to med school doesn't play anymore um but he still supports the podcast he has it subscribed and he said he was just listening to one podcast. It finished. It auto played our episode twenty. So he's like, "Well, I'll just listen to it." And he did. And then he was talking about how funny it was about the last hitting conversation. <laughs> That's about funny. how he's like, "No, new people need to go in a lobby and they need to Get last hit creeps. creeps over and over." Yeah. One. Th- also, another thing on just like the difficulty of the game and stuff. Because obviously that was a bit of a theme last week, and it is with this stuff as well, like the ward assistant, stack assistant. I saw a tweet from day nine today that I saw and was basically like, yeah, that's obvious and uh, something that needs to be said about how, yes, the game's extremely difficult to master, but it's actually really accessible for a new player to come in and have fun in a game like Dota. And it's not said enough, because I certainly when I talk to my friends that don't play Dota, they're like, oh, I'd never play Dota because it's way too hard. But it's honestly not for a new player to, to come and have fun. It's not difficult to have fun. You can just pick a hero and just like run around and do what you want. It is a really fun game for new players. Absolutely would agree. It seems like the big difficulty or what I see as big difficulty from what I read is the, I, the fact that you can load into a game as a real, real newbie and just get slapped by Smurfs or slapped by people with hundreds of games. Like If you could just sort it out where new players played with new players, it would everyone would be having a great time. Yeah, the age-old tutorial riot. There's that as well, yeah. Um, so yeah, anyway, back to real-life Battle Pass stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah. Scrolling down, we've got Rank Double Down, the scariest part of the Battle Pass for sure. Adam, I've been saying we need to use it in a big five stack. Everyone doubles for down. party MMR? Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. Add, add to the hype, five people double down. I'm too yeah, scared I'm never to use it in, do solo. it in solo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'd back myself in solo if it's a great draft because you can choose it after you've picked. Do you know that for sure? For sure, yeah. It's an option with wagering. You click wager or you click rank double down. Yeah. So maybe, if you've got a free win, something. Yeah, the enemy team types GGNs <laughs> and they've got like a techie's <laughs> last pick and you've got some OP lineup that could be tasty. Yeah. A bit of drama about recycling immortals, I don't really care. Yeah, people have been doing all the numbers and stuff on Reddit. Yeah. That post quickly got closed. I mean, the old way it. was you would recycle an immortal, give you two levels, so you would get closer to the more, I guess, significant rewards that were in the battle pass, and then eventually you would know you would get to another set, immortal set, as well but then this way is i think you what recycle four if you yes. recycle four immortals or five immortals you get another immortal chest plus a, a crystal maiden wheel spin no bonus levels so is it if you recycle say you recycled three immortal two treasures would you get another immortal two treasure that's what is unconfirmed i don't know if you just only get immortal one treasures uh, I guess we'll find out when the Mortal 2 mm. comes out. If it's, you get um, like a, you know, Trust of the Benefactor, you sort of roll and you get either one, two or three. Right. Um, if it's like that, then that's cool. But if you get the same Immortal Treasure, then that sucks. Um, cause I know if you people- get the same Immortal Treasure, it might be okay. But if you only can get 
Immortal Treasure 1, then that's terrible. Like if you're oh, yeah, recycling yeah. Treasure 3, that's what some people were saying. Like if you, that it might be that way. If you recycle twos, you get one. If you recycle threes, you get one. And that's not good because twos and three chests are way more sparse on, yeah, the, definitely. Uh, on the battle pass. But then there's like people saying, oh, it's this is so greedy from Valve and everything. But then I like the counterpoint that they pointed out is that all the value, like all the significant exclusive stuff this year is way more condensed and way more front loaded than it was yeah. last year. So you really don't need the two levels per set to like boost yourself um, towards the exclusive stuff. Only if you're going for like level 1000 and 2000, does this make a, yeah, a definitely. big difference? But then those people just slap on the money anyway. So, <laughs> right. They're like, what's it's, an extra oh, it's undoubtedly. There's definitely some very interesting microeconomics behind how they load their exclusive stuff in their battle pass. Because make no mistake, Valve has definitely calculated the relative positions of the exclusive cool stuff to maximize their profit. And the reason they front loaded it is, I don't think, because they're being nice. It's because they think that they can latch onto a bunch of people like, say, me, for example, who last year maybe had a level 150. But this year, because I can get all the cool stuff by level sort of 350, I might be tempted to slap some money down. Well, Whereas if it was up at 500, I just wouldn't bother. Um, Man, the big data of all the expenditure of Battle Pass and the level and the time you've played Dota and the level you're in at Dota and all that data, oof, that is juicy stuff for them to get the teeth into. Over all these years, they've done it. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Um Wagering, ranked rolls, in-game tipping, and trivia. This is sort of good stuff. <laughs> oh, man, it should have been grinding trivia. Yeah, got to grind the trivia. Got to grind it out to get the achievement and then never touch it ever again. <laughs> yeah. Trivia is so weird as well because uh, you'll get one, which is what does these two items build into? And it's boots of travel one and a recipe. And then it's like, you know, Sanjin Yasha, four staff, BOTs two, and some other random thing. But Dagon some... plus a recipe. That was one yeah. of my questions. That's a classic, yeah. Yeah. I saw a funny one on um I saw a Twitch clip of a funny one, which was um which item's lore is this? And they had four options, one of which was Sanjin Yasha. And then in the inverted commas for the lore was just insert Sanjin Yasha tooltip lore. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. Um so yeah, the trivia is a it's gotta be there. It's a it's a battle pass classic. It wouldn't be the same without nice it. Nice way to pass the queue. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Arcana vote. Have you guys voted yet? Yeah, I voted for Medusa in this Jeez, in this oh, first Medusa. set. Of, uh, oh no! There weren't like you know, there's not a ton that spoke to me in this so, first set. Of I heroes. agree. Yeah, I agree. That's a disc- there's a what do you mean? Not a lot of them spoke to it me. Probably a, I'll be Razor it would be the only other thing I would vote for. Oof, that's so it says the most contested vote is between Tiny and Meepo, which is quite cool. I wonder who's edging it. I peer pressured Marco into voting Meepo yeah. 16 <laughs> times. And well, that's certainly where I slap in my votes. Anytime Meepo's available, I'm just lumping on Meepo, that's for sure. Uh, they give all of the heroes that are guaranteed to win a buy anyway, like Lion, Faceless, Pango, Drow, Viper, Ursa, Wraith King. They would all crush all of these other heroes, probably. I would imagine. Um, Faces Void came second last year somehow. Jesus, what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who won it? Was it Earthshaker, did you say? Rubik. 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 And that was the Arcana that gets the green r- yeah. cubes. Yes. Um, Invoker, always a decent crowd turning up for Invoker. Void, maybe, I guess, makes a run for it. I don't know. It's always hard to tell. There's no front runners like there have been in previous years i don't know i don't really care because it's not all the classic ones have won like all the no you don't have to worry about pudge anymore so yeah yeah i also think um earthshaker would have been in with a shout if he hadn't got his one with this battle pass uh i'm really looking forward to seeing what that immortals like what that arcana is like yeah this weird invoke so i guess we're just talking about the let's just, we'll come back to where we're at in scrolling down the page but let's just talk about arcanas so there's earthshaker tiny and invoker all pretty much got an arcana right oh and axe yeah yeah if you want to we got a it's called the planet fall earthshaker arcana 
and uh, a celestial themed hero model. So we'll see what what that looks like. There's a yeah. prestige item for Tiny, and was it what was the prestige item last year? I lion can't... finger, finger. Yeah, of death. lion, lion finger. So this is a Tiny set. Uh, it's a new hero model and custom animations for Avalanche and Tree Grabbed, or Tree Grab. Yeah, and then we got a young invoker hero persona which is the first time they've done this it completely changes turns him into a kid it's so yeah, weird it's like what young invoker persona this is going to be really cool i think it's a shame i don't play invoker but man it's i would much prefer to lose to a uh, a child kid. invoker yeah yeah it's so oh, it's so funny that that and um, the other one I've got to talk about is Bare Knuckle Axe. That this is maybe the best set in Dota history. So yeah, this funny. I've I've played a few games with it on my team, and it's pretty awesome. So funny, just punching people in the face with axe. I'd also love the fact that he's just like naked, other than just some leaves. It's just the ultimate, just weird, pointless set that's just amazing. Yeah, he's um, got he's like a either Polynesian or like Maori or something. Yeah, like Maori, he, I think. Yeah, something like that. He, uh, when he calls, he like has all these tattoos that turn gold. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And you can still wear other set stuff with him. So, like, I have the immortal cape on, even with the... Uh, I see, yeah. The handless set. And then apparently if you have the blink dagger equipped, like that cosmetic he's got underwear that says axe on it and that's the first time anyone's ever seen it because of <laughs> i guess he had pants before yeah that's amazing like he's got his name on his underwear yeah that's another that's another gabe and clap in terms of profit maximizing because if i do decide to maybe go to these 300s i'm gonna have to stretch for the axe there's no doubt about it 425 mm -hmm. anyway We'll see where we end up with these and this battle pass. Um, yeah, I don't. When do you think they'll release them? I suppose they'll just do them in a month or something. I don't know, a couple months. It will just be spread out because every time you don't want to blow everything at once because you got to keep the trickle of content that pe get people like coming back. You know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Quick word for the compendium. This is actually my favorite part of the battle pass. I would buy a battle pass if it just had compendium. I don't know why. I just love the compendium, the player cards and the fantasy and all the predictions. I just I'm a sucker for predictions. Uh, oh yeah, filling out a bracket or just like the most picked hero or longest game, most last hits, yeah. GPM, like all that so stuff. They're all fun, yeah. So I look forward to the compendium side of things when that gets going we know what that's about so it used to just be the case that a compendium was released at ti right and then there was one year where this battle pass was released in addition to the compendium do you remember that yeah you? yeah is that right yeah ti3 was you you bought a compendium and it was kind of like a little book with just info and like you do your predictions and, yeah there might have been predictions but you it didn't really have that many levels I don't even know if you could level it, but you would just buy the compendium, you would get one immortal, and that was it. Yeah, that was, yeah. It was, there was the Baden immortal, the Vinge or, uh, immortal, the Whale Blade from Anka. Uh, there oh, were five. Yeah. Maybe a Pudge Hook. And like, yeah, there were, you got your one immortal, and you're like, this is awesome. And immortal actually meant like it was immortal, right? There were, that was the only items that had that rarity now it's like there's a million or more yeah, yeah. So many, yeah for the quick question on the fantasy team so i've never done this but i think i might properly do it this year do you choose a team for each day so when you yes. go on the fancy tab it's got each day of the international sort of group stage main event you choose your team for that day and lock it in and then change your car your team each day if you want yeah. yes okay and it's if definitely... you just put in thing if you just put in a team every day you're pretty much guaranteed to get top quarter and it's easy battle pass points. Yeah, it's definitely worth doing for the points. I.e. if you put a team in with players that are actually playing that day. Yeah, because a lot of people don't fool with it. They don't even bother to put in lineups. Yeah. Or they put in the first day and then never touch it again. So if you just change it for here, people that are playing, I think it's something like 
ten, five levels or something at the end of it. It's definitely worth doing. Uh, I think top ten percent is at least ten levels. Yeah. See, I've I've never failed to get in the top percent purely like from what Adam's just saying, just because if you change it every day, you will get some points. So, um, treasures. We won't spend too long on these immortal treasures. Anything worth mentioning? I mean, they're all pretty standard. Uh, nothing bonkers. I think the draw one's pretty sweet, but of course that's the ultra rare. Yeah, yeah. That's the only one. The Earthshaker, the Earthshaker one's, okay. one's decent. The Life Stealer weapon is, to me, it's cool because it it looks like the spits of this World of Warcraft rogue weapon, and that's my only comment. On that. <laughs> yeah, that's Some, my like, only comment big nostalgia right there otherwise well i got the next one which i was pretty happy about which one did you get adam it's got all of them bro what are you talking about? all of them except for drow oh really you could just get yeah. that many chests yeah the very you got very rare skyraf yeah and life stealer have you got oh, the life stealer cool. back the golden back from yeah last i have year. the golden back as well ah, so full gold life stealer. Like, completely gold pretty much Whoa. that skyraf one looks really cool to be honest yeah, there was a time when I had the Golden Skyrath staff, which would have been pretty crazy hmm. to have the Golden Wings and the Golden Staff. Yeah. Terrain? I always end up getting the terrain. Love me a new bit of terrain. Adam, have you been using it yet? Or No, I usually just keep it on standard terrain. Oh, that's boring, that. Love a bit of terrain. My, I actually... Reef's Edge from TI7 is maybe my favorite terrain. Yes, Reef's uh, Edge is why I stopped doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I love a bit of Reef's Edge. We'll see. I haven't looked at it really because uh, my battle pass isn't there yet. It will be though by the time this is all done. And then basically, I guess that brings us to seasonal wheel sounds. <laughs> you know hero it's lines. TI season. Yeah. Wait, sorry, go on. I was the hero voice lines basically is what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Well... The you mean the like casters as well though? Yeah, the caster packs. Yeah, I guess that's what I mean. Yeah, you know it's TI season when Lakad Matatag is back. That some... went so high level; it's like seven hundred or something. Yeah, to get, to get normal in again. Six six five for Lakad Matatag. Um, I watched some MDL Paris this morning, and whew, we're back. It is back, back in TI season. <laughs> yes. I watched VP versus Pain. Goodness me, oh, that yes. was rough. Uh, well, I just have to wait for like OG versus VP, and that'll be almost unwatchable. I'm so I just I this as part of the reason why I just went to level 500 right away was I was wanting some voice lines. I am so excited. I got my Nichibichi back. I got my Chebukobet Yo 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 one. The oh, six, that six, the six. classic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy. I have that one again. <laughs> Looking Even spicy. Though, yeah. The uh this guy has no chill, man. That one's so good. Yeah. You just want to yeah. kill someone in lane and then we'll we'll just have it I have it on the ready for when Marco rage buybacks. I'm just like this guy <laughs> has no chill, man. Which commentator said that? That's Seb in true sight. Oh it's Seb. Oh, that was one of the chat wheels. <laughs> That's sick. Yeah, there are some uh Fun ones. Honestly, just the Russian and Chinese ones, some of them are so good. Uh, I, I watched a, a pub earlier where Zai was just spamming Korean casters forever. <laughs> yeah. um, so there are some really weird ones, like the Epic casters and the the new Epic caster pack and the new Korean caster pack is so bizarre. Mm -hmm. I can't, I would do impersonations of them, but I just it would be so terrible that we'd have to retire from podcasting. Um, lane creeps that look like crocodiles. <laughs> I'm excited for that. I love I love me some custom lane creeps. Yeah, I mean, I've got the other custom lane creeps. Wait, is this a level one thing? Do I get these? One eighty two. Ah, oh, boring. So I got last year's ones. Uh, I kind of want crocodiles. I'm sure I'll end up with them. Yeah. Then taunts. Taunts are pretty good. They got some pretty good ones this year. Yeah. I love the uh, a lot of the Reddit threads about Alpine Ursa set being removed because it doesn't have a lore <laughs> and then he's like crashing symbols <laughs> on a unicycle. Yep. <laughs> uh, 
Not much to say about those. I just got the Slardar one, Pog. Pog? I, the Chaos Knight one's cool because all the illusions do it, so it's always a, you know really cool when you have an illusion hero. Oh, that's good. The Grimstroke one's pretty cool as well. Slaps the, the floor with the slaps the floor of his paintbrush with the question mark. Yeah, yeah. It's like a lich is part of the Harlem Go- Globe Trotters, basically. He's yeah, yeah. Spinning that ball around. That one's actually low key OP because it has music tied in with it. So you know you can spam music in lane and people will get sad kind of like the shadow fiend drums so annoying yeah Coria, don't really care dark will announce a pack Pfft. fine i'll probably use it for a bit i have my announce packs on shuffle so i won't mind that will you do it because they released the meepo one and i did it one game and then i turned it off and then never touched it ever again. It doesn't sound like Meepo. That's the bit I don't like about it. I was so excited for that. And then it's a different... The guy that voices it is a different person or something. Yeah. Um. So, I don't know. I think Dark Willow is kind of a fun character to have an announcer pack. We'll see. Music packs, actually, low-key, one of my favorite parts. Maybe. Don't mind a good music pack. I've been pumping up since it came out. Uh, I have music turned off, so I'll have to take your word. Yeah, see, I have music turned off as well, um, but when the new pack comes out, I usually turn it on for like a week or two. I really like the TI7 music pack, the the music, the water-themed one, uh, just for what it's worth. <laughs> oh, one other thing from watching the Paris games today that is just the absolute worst part of this battle pass is this ranged auto-attack effect making it purple (laughs) it's awful because they all have it all the pros have it every right click is this weird purple confetti thing and that's like level uh what 12 or 1500 yeah i know 75 yeah yeah see in this game they all had it because they're pros so they just may as well splash cash that's crazy oh it was just endless clutter it looks so weird i really want them to i want valve to say you can't do it in pro games it just makes every ranged auto attack look the same. Yeah, exactly. And it's just, ugh. I don't think it'll be a problem in game for us plebs, though. There won't be many people with that high battle class. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the pass for the most. Okay, that seems like the pass. Time for some drums, and then we'll talk about fun lanes. Okay, so a fun lane that I would think of. Because when in the lane in, I feel like there aren't that many super fun lanes in terms of heroes and how they go together in the lane. Because typically you need these big ults to get some funky stuff going. One of my favorites, and it's been a favorite for a long time, it's probably one of Adam's as well, is the idea of Potem with a setup hero. So I think Adam put Bane Potem, but I also would think of Potem plus Bane or Shadow Demon for Disruption or Kunker with his X or another classic I feel back in Dota 1 days was Earthshaker. I feel like that's not really seen as much anymore. And again, that's with Fissure. So you can Fissure from a long way away or relatively long way away and then fire the arrow so that you get the stun stun lock off. Here's a fun one. It's the, like, the ultimate kill condition lane. You yeah. just guess. I'm thinking Bane. Um, Bane is the easiest someone. for sure. It lasts so long, so you can yeah. get an arrow from miles away. Shadow Demon, a little bit more skill to that because you've got to time the hero popping out of disruption. But it does help that when they pop out, they've got two illusions blocking them a little bit. Hmm. Uh, I really like the disruption one as well. Though. Oh, actually, I was thinking of Shadow Demon plus Kunker. That's a classic because you torrent the disruption. Hmm. Uh, I guess you could X arrow. That's a bit tricky, and I've actually never seen that. But yeah, you say a little bit harder. A bit tricky is like these are orders of magnitude higher than just hitting a nightmare target. Yeah, (laughs) nightmare is definitely the easiest. But then you come again, come against next level players who will wake up the nightmare target and like do some funky sleeping awake, sleep awake stuff. Yeah, we'll just say. uh, Potom is Priestess of the Moon, otherwise known as Marana. Yes. By the way. Yes. Bane Marana. Won a Marana game this morning. Feels good. One of my jungle heroes. This uh, 
this jungle hero stuff is already confusing me because everyone keeps talking about it. It makes me think that they're going to go jungle with the hero that they're talking yeah. about. They're just like, yeah, I got to do Marana for the jungle. I'm like, what? no, no <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. You explain it to them though, and then they high five you and all's well. Yeah, high five. Fountain high fives. That's just standard. Um, a fun lane that I have that is more common than a potem setup lane probably is just something like Doom Jug is just brokenly good because if any Doom heroes Jug, sorry, oh, not Doom Jug, jug not Doom Jug, Grim Jug, sorry, um, Grim Stroke Jug. Ink swell plus spin equals kill. It's as simple as that. Um, it's just so fun being able to just wreck enemies, at least at my level. I don't know how you're meant to play against that lane, but I've certainly, playing as a jug, when you can just right-click someone, trade a bit, and then if they just stay forward without being literally full health, you just run at them, spin, ink swell on top, GG. Yeah, you've got to be so tanky to be able to withstand a juggernaut spin that spell does so much damage even just at level two level three it's one of those where you, you really need a hero that can evade spin um something like wind ranger but even then once grimstroke's got a couple levels and he can slow you a stroke of fate even something like wind ranger is not super safe the key if you're playing against it is to get your boots as fast as possible and then also, don't be afraid to pick up a, ca a wind lace on top of your boots of speed because if you can outrun the jug, you should never, you should therefore never ever die to his blade fury. And the moment he's out of his blade fury, and if he doesn't like basically kill you off that, he is now all of a sudden very weak and vulnerable. I know I played a lane as jug against it was some Smurf Shadow Shaman. I'm sure it was like well, I don't know who it was, but it was some really high level player and he got boots win lace without me realizing when i was on jug and then i tried to get a kill and don't get it he like able to bait away from me and then i kind of overcommit, and then he's able to turn and i don't get a kill i think maybe he does or kills my i think i was with lich and then just turn the lane around just small things like that can really change the lanes but generally yeah jug with grim would be dirty hard to deal with Plus the uh, the bonus move speed from Inkswell that yeah, I don't he can know. cast on the magic immune jug. It's so good. Yeah. The move speed synergizes so well with spin. Yeah, I didn't even know it gave movement speed bonus. It used to give more. When I, when Grimstone was first released, it was some fat move speed bonus, although back then it did disarm you, but it also made you immune to physical or something weird. So Oh, yeah. He, God, that was so long So ago. stupid. Yeah. It was like... He, this, super top tier offensive support had defensive utility too yeah um adam have you got a fun lane yeah so this one i've wanted to talk about for a while and it's only off of one game where it happened and it's very niche and rare and i don't think you can't count on loading up into a game with this combo and get expecting to get it and it's a uh, doom plus keeper of the light so what made this lane so fun was pretty much at level one, I was the Doom. I went over to their easy camp and I saw the Harpy Stormcrafter. <laughs> so I devoured the Harpy Stormcrafter. And if you're not well versed on your easy camps, that's the that camp's ability is a chain lightning spell, basically. And it does 140 damage on like a five second cooldown and it chains around. Isn't it cast range stupid as well? It's, I mean, it's super OP. Uh, uh, and really also, long. Yeah, really long. A ton of damage. I think it's like 50 mana. So it's super, super low cooldown, super low mana. And then Coddle, not only does he give you a ton of mana, he also refreshes the cooldown. So you just spam the enemy carry and support out of lane just with this easy camp spell that nobody should be able to support. And it's about the only combo you can do it because uh, can Coddle give Chakra mana to creeps? I'm not I'm not sure. It's not like Chen. 
mean, back in the day, Channer and Chantress would get the Harpy Stormcrafter and spam some people down with it. But the thing is, they have mana pools that eventually the creep mana pool runs out and then you're yeah. sad. But this it says, is like constant spam. It says you can give to allied units. Okay. So Gen Ench to enchant the neutral and then spam away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that that's a pretty fun lane. We just like bullied them out of lane just off of like an easy creep camp spell. And that, that's why you can't do it every game as well. You know, if you go over to the camp and they don't have Har Harpy Stormcrafter, then you can't can't do this. But Costal, it also yeah. could be good with the uh the what is it, Seder Tormentor? Seder the big red Seder? I don't know. The one with Hadouken. <laughs> The one with the Duke and the one with oh, the that one, yeah. ball. I mean, that's already the top tier one to get in lane just because of the region. But it's oh, also super, a... yeah, it's super value like spell. It is kind of expensive, but if you have a coddle to top you off and lower that cooldown, that's super strong early. You can just keep spamming out the Hadouken. So it's a kind of the same idea. Yeah, if you're a doom and you get the Hadouken creep and you've got Devour hp regen it's like you've got chemical rage active or something it's ridiculous how much regen you have in the lane it's like 17 at level one i think with the devour active <laughs> 17 hp regen yeah um cottle was a fun one there, there are a bunch of cottle combinations i imagine that would be really fun chakra magic is just cool cottle pl back in the day was a classic one uh i played a game with a cottle tusk lane uh position one tusk that was quite fun. That because obviously Tusk is very mana dependent, and with Chakra Magic lowering cooldown of the spell that he cast next, he's, he had like constant uptime. And Tusk is just the ultimate killer ganker. So they just got so many kills in the lane. That was quite a fun one. And shards is a decent setup for uh, Blinding Light to knock them back a bit, get more tag team hits in, and all that. So that was an like, interesting lane that I saw with Cottle today. Shout out to Darkseer Ricky. That can end some low-level pubs, I imagine, when it takes you too long to realize why you're taking damage with nothing in sight. Yeah, and if you're quick with a if you're quick with a quelling blade to just destroy their sentry before they place it, I can probably if you can do that, you'll probably you not can... only end some low-level games, you'll probably end some Dota careers as yeah, well. Yeah, literally. Darkseer Bounce Hunter again, same idea. And I think that might actually be better because Bounty Hunter would just steal your gold and do that huge Janata right click on top of you. Yeah, that's definitely a fun one. You could do like some Darkseer Enchantress or Darkseer Chen lanes, right? And just Iron Shell some big fat creep. Or maybe not Chen because you can't take fat creeps at level one anymore or something weird. Yeah, Enchantress, you could like is. haste the uh, or surge like a centaur or something, get a big stun or. Yeah, for sure. Um, a lane that I've not ever seen but could be cool is Cogs, so Clockwork and Mars, because the Cogs act as a, some sort of terrain that Spear can latch into. So if you Cog someone, you've got a guaranteed Mars Spear. You can also do it on Fissure. If someone's stood next to a, the Fissure wall, you can Spear them to that as well. You can Spear into Fissure wall? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So those could that. be cool combos. I hadn't seen the cogs before. So you throw them into the cogs, do they also get mana burned? Well, I guess so. It's just that they then don't get pushed like... back because they're latched onto it. The way I've seen it is that the enemy is within the cogs with clock. You then spear into the cogs and that enemy gets trapped on the inside of the cogs. I guess it must mana burn. They just don't get pushed back. I bet what happens is... They get stuck to it, and then maybe once they get unstunned, they get pushed. They, they get pushed. That'd be super down. cool. They yeah. definitely do that if you latch them to the outside of the cogs. I think and you'll do the stun. The stun will hold on the cogs, and then at the end of the stun duration, they'll get mana burned and pushed out again because that's how that's it works even inside. More yeah. That's how it works inside Marzol, isn't it? You spear them to the wall. The wall doesn't proc. The stun goes through and then at the end of the stun duration they get that push back in for the ult damage if you know what i mean but the ult damage ticks as they're latched on the wall which you then would expect cog damage to tick as the latch to the cog oh 
As in, what do you mean? As in, so if you're impaled on the Mars arena, you take yeah. that boom the damage as you're impaled, but you don't get pushed off the wall because you're impaled. Oh, so when you get pushed off after the stun duration, you don't take damage. You just no, yeah, you would take damage, but so you, you take get two off. lots of damage. You take off. You can. You get taken like three, four instances of damage. That's why it's a, a combo. Because oh, you're latched on the wall where you keep taking damage but don't get pushed you off keep it. it. Ah, so I reckon the same must apply for the cogs. You keep getting mana burned, but you don't get pushed off until the latch ends. That would seem pretty sick if you pretty keep interesting getting mana I think it could work quite well with Earthshaker. Earthshaker 4, Mars 3, you do this long-range fissure from nowhere, and then as the fissure hits, you throw the spear that then, boom, latches him to the, the fissure wall. Run up and slap. Mm. Some high-tier... Mars mechanics that I did not know about. Yeah, man. Mars From the mind of a spammer. <laughs> he he ho ho. Marco's Mars win rate's fallen off. Two loss streak on Mars. Oh, no. I know. I, I, I've won since those two losses, but yeah. Oh, okay. Had two losses, feel really bad. Yeah, Mars loss, it hurts more than a normal loss. That's for sure. Yeah. That's like when I lose on Meepo, it's worse than a normal loss, for sure. Um, Bane Pudge, pretty fun. Or indeed Bane Mars. I mean, Bane just for a setup spell. Bane's just the ultimate setup player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Adam, I don't know. Did you have a lane you had in mind when Marco spoke earlier? Or uh, Vangelis Shrek was one that I think. Oh fun. yeah, Vangelis yeah. Shrek. That one you have magic missile and the split earth stun combo, and then you have a wave of terror minus armor with. But Diabolic Edict, since it's physical damage, they synergize with one another with the minus armor. So that's fun. Yeah. That's the same with like Venge Pango. It buffs all of Pango's Q instances of damage because his Q is physical. Yeah. Um, so it helps with that as well. Uh, for some nice burst, Wave of Terror into Pango Q. What's Pango's Q even called? Can any of you? Swashbuckle. Swashbuckle, yeah. of course. And then uh, what's nice about Venge Shrek is that it's two fifths of a dirty pushing lineup already. So it's like kill potential off lane along with gross pushing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Between edict on towers and then just the aura from Venge. Yeah. There are definitely some like aid lanes to run that are pretty fun. Heroes like Undying and Jakiro, uh, you can turn into some pretty disgusting lanes. And Veno, I suppose, as well, with the Gale Slow. Um, something like Jakiro. In fact, Jakiro Veno, that sounds like it could be a pretty insane lane. So much DOT. <laughs> exactly, yeah, just so much dot. One thing I was going to mention, do you remember the Brewmaster change to his drunken brawler AoE, and then it became, I don't know how it's that AoE where you can hit yourself. Yeah. Wasn't there some change about fire? Um, On Cinderbrew, yeah. Damage synergizes Well, that was just somehow. like when it when they first changed the spell, it was like if they you laid down that rum and then if there was an immolating spell of over a certain damage threshold, it would light it ablaze. But that's no longer the case. I think, yeah, they got rid of that. Like, okay. Zena, Jakiro, yeah, yeah, it's just Now rider. it's a damage threshold. So. Yeah, I was going to say, oh, a potential fun lane could be some brew plus fire combo, but yeah, reading him in client now, it seems like that has changed. Yeah, yeah we're not, it's not Pokemon anymore. You don't <laughs> yeah. need yeah. a gas type with a fire. <laughs> I was, was so say, confused yeah. in that change. When it came out and everyone was just like, we Pokemon now. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'd run a brew tusk lane in the in-house. That was pretty fun. Tusk is a fun lane with most melee heroes, I reckon. Yeah, especially with Drunken Brawler. You just slap people so hard with crits, plus tag team. Yeah, Good with tag team. We outlaned an Ursa, which is a pretty strong hero against melees. Tusk Centaur, really fun. Because you need to be on the enemy's face for Centaur to get his stomp and double edge off. Used to be Tusk Techies when he would have suicide, instant suicide. You would oh, uh, yeah. snowball up on somebody in suicide. Fine. Plant a mine, then suicide. Yeah. That was a crazy That's... damage. Yeah, and they yeah. blocked in the shards. Honestly, that was crazy. TI went in strats. AUI. The Agi heroes don't really get much shout out in this uh, 
discussion feels well, I'll bad. I'll give a shout out to some Azure heroes then. Go Luna on, then. Drow lane. Support Luna with Drow. Level max your uh, Luna Blessing. Bonus primary attribute to Drow, which then gives attack speed to allies. That's a secret combo right there. And I mean team secret. Uh, running the, the four Luna. True. I don't know if it's good. Could be fun though. I mean, what what's maxed out Luna Blessing give? Something like twenty Agi or something. Twenty four. Twenty four Agi. I mean, twenty four Agi to Drow. I mean, if you're giving twenty four Agi to Strength heroes as well, so I know Secret ran Pudge when they had that Luna. If you're giving twenty four Strength to some from uh, fat from tanky hero, that's a that's a lot. Level seven as well when you can be doing that. Twenty four Strength, two and a half Ogre clubs. Yeah. Give Od in. <laughs> get near him for a big didn't they yeah. do that didn't they do like drow OD and then like some huge strength offliner so they like Sven Pudge or something yeah, these kind of heroes one of each and it was like how is this happening like 72 primary stats being given out I mean Sven would go really well given his war cry now also works off his own strength in terms of the amount of damage block you give mm. to your allies is dependent on Sven's strength. Sounds like we're building up for a Lunar Strat the next time we do a five-man party. <laughs> we are, yeah. Just yeah. do a Lunar Strat, lump 500 wages on it. Easy money. Double down as well. Easy double down, yeah. Ranked <laughs> double down. Yeah, for sure. What could go wrong? Nothing. So yeah, some definitely some fun lanes uh, to try and some fun strats with our Luna. That's episode one done pretty much 21 episode one episode what? episode 21 sorry into the 20s We're starting over We're start <laughs> this is a new leaf the new leaf We're episode one scrap the previous 20 and no start it. everyone knows how dota works is before bc before battle pass ad after the battle pass um <laughs> <laughs> so yeah this is the first episode of our of battle pass lifestyle episode 21 done Episode 22 is going to be on how to play offlane. That's a big app right there. Yikes, that's a big question. Huge app. Yeah. We've got a week to think about it, though, because there'll be no Tuesday app. Um, so, yeah, we've got a full week to get our position threes out. Yeah, going to have to flex some losses in the solo ranks whilst I try and play <laughs> position three. I think yeah. we're going to be we're gonna be partying up and like, no, I need to play three. We're all yeah. going to be fighting over it. Like, I need to learn. And also, so, the hero pool is going to be omega restricted because we're going to have to play threes, and they're going to have to be jungle heroes. Yeah. So I don't know how many threes I've got in my jungle pool at the moment, uh, but we'll, we'll have to see how that one goes. But yeah, big episode twenty-two planned. So I hope all of you position three players out there have circling that one in your calendar. Um, thanks to Marco and Adam for turning up and uh, giving me their kind and instructful words. Instructful is not a word. Um, <laughs> So yeah, see you next Friday. Um, have fun in the battle pass. See you in the jungle, lads. GG's. See you in the jungle. <laughs>